It's a pleasure having you today. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Congratulations on your leadership role and, of course, on the award. Thank you. Thank All you. right. So talk to us. How does that make you feel in particular and what does it mean for Wema Bank? Okay, I think for me, um, uh, for me, um, it's just a testament to um, all the hard work we've put in. Uh, not my own work alone. Uh, I'm just the leader, but um, I have a lot of people that report and work for me. And really, uh, this award we have won today is um, dedicated to them. It's actually their hard work. Um, you know, there cannot be leadership without followership. Um, so, honestly, this award has been dedicated to them uh, because of all the hard work they've put in over the years. So it's been a long time coming. Absolutely. Yeah. Wema Bank has been here for very long. 78 years. Exactly. So talk to us about how you've been able to evolve and, you know, stay competitive. Okay, we have the saying in the bank that um, a 78-year-old man that can dance at Azunto. Uh, <laughs> can you dance it? I can. Uh, you can. We'll can. do that before the uh, end of today. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but um, I think, um, honestly, we've been around for 78 years. We've had our ups and downs. Uh, one thing that has kept us is we've been able to reinvent ourselves from time to time. Uh, more recently, in um, 2017, we came out with the first digital bank in Nigeria and Africa, and that has changed the paradigm and the narrative for the bank. Um, right now, a lot of the fintechs in Nigeria work with Wema, and it's brought us back to the forefront of banking. Whether anybody likes it or not, technology is here to stay, digital is here to stay. Uh, most businesses are driven by technology, and this is something we understand. It's in our DNA, uh, so it has catapulted us to the um, topmost ranks of the Nigerian banking industry. Absolutely. Let's yeah. talk about fintech now. Yeah. You're revolutionizing uh, that space. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about, you know, at the end of the day, how all of that contributes to financial inclusion. Well, um, you know, the beauty of technology is that you don't need to be there physically. It permeates everywhere. Um, so, and the kind of technologies we have, USSD, um, internet banking, mobile banking, as long as someone has a device somewhere, you can reach them. The beauty of it also is that what we try and do is to make sure that apart from the platforms of engagement, because one thing that endangers customers to use to make sure that their funds are safe, we also make sure we spend a lot on security. Um, there are bad actors out there constantly trying to get into our accounts, but we make sure that the front end is secure, the back end is secure. And so with technology, we've been able to reach where we could not have reached. We can locate branches everywhere in Nigeria, but as long as you have technology, and the kind of technology we have is one that is easy for the customer to use. The customer experience is seamless and very, very easy. You are able to reach your customers. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. When we talk about financial inclusion, I mean, I've been in meetings where conversations are held and there's some person say, look here, you can talk about financial inclusion and all you're talking about is getting people on some platforms, on some devices. I mean, the main financial inclusion is putting money in their pockets. I agree with you. There, there cannot be fine. You can only include what you have. Uh, so financial inclusion must begin with the policies of government um, to make sure that there's growth in the economy, that our people have enough to be able to feed, to have that extra disposable income before we start talking about including, including them digitally. So you must, uh, what we're trying to do in Nigeria is to try and bring as much of our people into, away from the poverty bracket, into prosperity. And then when you have prosperity, we, you can be talking about digital financial inclusion. After all, if you have someone that has a device but there's no money in the bank account, what's the point? So I think it starts with government policies, monetary policy, fiscal policy, real growth in the economy. And we as operators in that economy, the banks, we are intermediaries in that economy. We will play our part. All the other verticals must also play their part. I like this intersection between yeah, yeah. the government and yeah. the bank, and of course the economy yeah, at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah. So talk to us about how financial institutions are also contributing to economic growth and the roles that financial institutions in Nigeria are playing or should be playing. Well, I, I, I think there's no, there's no country in the world. If you have to grow, then you need the financial institutions. There's no doubt about that. And I think what we are trying to do is to make sure that, first of all, like I said, you start with government itself. Government will do their bit. We will do our bit. What we've done in the Nigerian financial system over the years is we've applied technology. We spent a lot on technology. Um, the, the, the way our financial system works here, you go to a lot, even in the United States, their payment system isn't as robust as what we have in Nigeria. So we spent a lot of money to make sure that we have best-in-class payment systems for our people. But away from that, you need to 
um, put financing in their hands. So you talk about the farmers, you talk about people in manufacturing, you talk about people in creative industry. We need to make sure that financing gets into their hands and financing gets into their hands at the right cost. There's no point, point giving someone money and then the cost of repayment is too high and then that business goes bust. So we must make sure that financing gets into their hands and financing at the right cost gets into their hands. And then away from that, not only making sure you give them financing, you make sure you, you stay with the business you, you understand their business, you try and guide them through economic cycles. And ultimately, the aim is to, if I finance your business and I give you the first one million, my prayer is that you come to me at a point when you also need a billion. So it's moving them from just doing okay to what we call real prosperity and growth. And that is what banks are for all over the world. That was why banks are created. So there is no way in the world, if you have to have an economy that is, that, that, that is robust, if you have to have people that are going to flourish, you will need to have banks and we must play our own part. And from what you've just said, I see the role of monetary policies there because when you're saying that finance should be affordable, that's where monetary policies and some of those yeah, things yeah, come yeah. in. But I mean, that's going to be a lot of conversations, if we, if it's yeah. a lot of, I mean, a lot of talks yeah. if we're going to delve into that. So very quickly, uh, what should we expect from Wema Bank moving forward? What's the future? I think for us, um, um, well, uh, the current management of Wema Bank, we, we took over the bank about um, 14 years ago, and we've had three stages. Uh, the first stage was to stabilize the bank that was on for about um, nine years uh, my predecessor what he did was to started the growth in the bank mine is called the hyper growth phase um, if you know the history of Wema bank well, the Wema bank we're sitting on today is a combination of very two great two very great banks in nigeria national bank and Wema bank so our aspiration in this third phase of Wema is to at least take this bank to the next level which is taking making making sure that the bank becomes a systemically important bank um, there is nothing like saying you are a small bank. Um, in banking, skill matters. And what we've, you know, my philosophy in life is if you, if you if you aim for the stars and you don't get to the stars, at least you get somewhere far. So our eyes are set on on, on, on the top, and I, I see nothing holding us uh, back, honestly. And uh, the beauty of it for me is that the people I'm leading, they are even more hungry for it than I am. So that keeps me it keeps me motivated and, and wanting to lead them, honestly. Absolutely. Thank uh, you so, so much. So, so just watch this space. We'll see how it goes. We will watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot.